the sun, a completely natural and virtually inexhaustible source of energy. The energy from our sun that reaches the Earth's surface each year is enough to meet the needs of mankind thousands of times over. So why then can we not make better use of it? Yeah, the potential is huge indeed, and we are using so little. I see many reasons, but uh, one is definitely uh, inertia in, in, the, in the society. The other aspects are of course related to the technology to produce solar cells, to really niche the full scale of mass implementation on Earth and covering large surfaces, you need a very low-cost uh, production method and very uh, low-cost materials. At Linköping University on the Norrköping campus, Xavier Crispin leads a project to find solutions for tomorrow's energy problems by making better use of everyday resources that already exist around us. It is a major challenge, but Xavier believes in the power of science and human ingenuity. Yeah, I think there are different aspects. I mean, you, you can go from more conservative to completely crazy. The nanotechnology, I think we have not explored everything, so there is a lot of potential. I'm thinking about uh, basically splitting water to produce hydrogen and using hydrogen to produce electricity. And if you go far away in, in, in fantasy, knowing and believing there is dark energy that is 70% of, uh, of the universe, I mean, is there a way to harvest that into other type of energy? And that would also solve the problem, but this is far catch. <laughs> This quest has always had a natural place in Xavier's life. He has been fascinated by the unknown for as long as he can remember. Yeah, it was so when I was a child. The all-new, completely different Gilbert chemistry set. You know this uh, kind of chemistry box? I got one and doing uh, some kind of experiment and, and, and seeing that materials can be transformed, change colors or create an explosion, start to burn. You make plastic. Mold plastic, play with plastic. I was really fascinated by something is happening, I don't know wh what, and it's not visible to my eyes, but something is going on there, and I want to understand that. Xavier's background is in organic chemistry with a focus on polymers, that which we simply call plastics. Could it actually be plastics that will be the answer to the future energy challenge? Plastics or conducting polymers, semiconducting polymers, they are based basically on uh, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, so all abundant atoms. Then you, you end up with a, a, a semiconductor that is scalable at low cost and is, very, is based on ab abundant materials. By combining different blends of polymers, Researchers are trying to create components for tomorrow's solar panels that are cheaper and more efficient than before. About half of the energy available from the sun exists in what we call the solar tail. One of the big projects that we have is called the Tail of the Sun. And in that project, what we intend to do is to try to find new concept to harvest electricity from solar radiation and more specifically, to infrared solar radiation, so non-visible light. Silicon-based solar cells in use today can only make use of the high-intensity visible sunlight. But about 50% of the sun's energy is found within the infrared spectrum. If science can succeed in utilizing the sun's invisible rays, the efficiency of solar cells will improve dramatically. The production cost of alternative energy sources is another important factor when competing with coal, oil and gas. That's why they're working in close cooperation with a Norrköping-based company nearby. 
This is a, a, a printing machine, and this is a special machine that is uh, devoted to uh, printing plastic solar cells, so polymer solar cell. And this is the kind of solar cells that is produced here. You see you have different colors indicating different layers and uh, different materials. The advantage of polymers is that they can be soluble in some kind of solvent, like uh, nail polish is soluble in acetone, other polymers are soluble in other solvent. And you can replace like this the ink in a printer with these soluble semiconductors and you can start to then use printing technology to produce a solar cell or other kind of device like thermoelectric device, etc. Even the batteries that store the solar energy will also need to be cheaper in order for the dream of a green future to become a reality. We are working on that topic too, so we have thinking and dreaming about producing electrodes for batteries like producing paper today. So in a large amount and they have a huge roll of paper that you can dip in seawater and you have huge battery for, for low cost. This is a, also a dream, but maybe become the reality too.